Um, girls, can I get started? Yeah. Uh, sorry, look at the handout. I'm basically going to go through the examples and a few questions that I thought was good. We're going to go through two exercises today. I'm not going to make you do all of the questions though. It's going to be like, I think, even for the first one, odd for the second one. All right. Geometric series girls, I'd like to get started looking over here. It's basically when it's going up by a multiple of a number, okay, instead of adding a number, okay? So whatever it's whatever the multiplier is, it's actually called R for ratio. Okay? The first term is still A. Yeah. So for instance, like here, let's say like this was some really crazy number, you didn't know what it's going up by. It's always going to be the second term over the first term. Oh my gosh, sorry. Okay, or you could do the third term divided by the second term. You're always going to get the same ratio. Okay, so which comes to the first question. Find the value of A, that's just 2. Find the value of B, sorry, R, that's 3. Now the expression for any geometric series is, that's the formula. I think that's given to you in the formula sheet. So A is 2 times by the ratio is 3 to the power of N minus 1. Okay, do not multiply these out. This is 3 to the power of something. It's, it, this doesn't become 6 to the power of n minus 1. Yeah. All right. So from here, if I wanted to find the 10th term, that's just 2 times 3 to the power of obviously 9. And that's going to give you 39,003. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, if you wanted to go backwards, find the value of k when the term is 4,374. So you've got to work backwards. So you've got 4374 is equal to that expression, okay, and then we just got to look for n, divide the 2, sorry my board works a bit messy, um, 4374 divided by 2 is 2187, and then you've got 3 to the power of n minus 1, okay, now you can use tron and error to figure this out, so like 3 to the power of really big number, but I'd rather you girls not and know the proper method, so in order to properly do that, just recall if you, so remember, if you got y equals to a to the power of x. Log a y. Yeah, log a y, right? So that's the same concept here. So in this case, so in this case, how would you write, so the n minus 1. Log 3, 2, 1, 8, 7. Yeah, n minus 1 equals to log, my a is a 3. Log 2, 1, 8, 7 over. Yeah. Log so 3. this is log 3, 2, 1, 8, 7 over log 3, and then if I want to find n, make sure to plus 1 at the end, because it comes with n minus 1. If you put all of this in the calculator, you'll get n. Yeah? Does that make sense? Alright, um, so that's the example. I actually, I could skip example 19, it's just some... Um, example 19, there are some obviously where it's not a geometric series if it doesn't go up by a certain multiplier. It's always got to be the same number. Okay? You can also divide by a certain number. So we'll get to that one later. Okay, let's have a look at example 21. So going backwards, when you're just given facts. So the third term is 12. The sixth term is 96. Those two are in geometric sequence. Find the values of A and R, and then find the first three terms. Okay, so it's simultaneous equation once again. So from here, so your generic formula is that. So 12 is equal to A, we don't know, R, we don't know, N minus 1. What's my N minus 1? Yeah, okay. Whereas from here, we've got 96 is equal to A, R, 5. Yep. And then what you want to do is you want to divide those two, but I prefer if I divide it like this. Yeah, so if I divide, basically, that part... What's 96 divided by 12? That's 8. A divided by A cancels. So think of this as a fraction, basically. Um, and this becomes R3, so R is equal to cube root of 8, which is 2. Yeah? So using that, now we can plug it back in either of these. So let's plug it back in here. So 12 is equal to A2 squared, and then we can figure out A from there. So this is just 12 is equal to 4A. A is equal to 3. So the first term is 3, and then it goes up by a multiplier of 2, which is 6, and then times by 2 again, so, so those are your three terms. Yeah, pretty straightforward. All right, let's look at a specific question. Question 7 I thought was good from your exercise. 
Have a look at question 17. Yeah, this is a tricky question. It looks tricky. Okay, girls, you've got to read the question carefully for this. Please pay attention. Girls, the isotope carbon-11 is used treatment of cancers. It has half-life of 20 minutes. So, girls, here's an important fact right there. If it says half-life of 20 minutes, that means after 20 minutes, there's only half of the remaining amount. Is that all right? Now, yeah, so the next line says this means that after 20 minutes, only half the initial amount. So that's what it is. What fraction of the initial dose of carbon-11 remains after one hour? So here's how you got to look at it. Girls, after 40 minutes, it's going to be half times another half, isn't it? Because every 20 minutes, only half of it remains. So if I want it for 60 minutes, that's basically this. Yeah? So that's actually how you do that first question, which isn't bad, but it's this setup that's actually quite tricky to do. But for the second part, when will there be 0.025% of the initial dose? So what you need to do for this one, girls, is um, be able to write the percentage as a fraction, which is, um, yeah, so if you put 0.025 divided by 100, you get one over 4,000, okay? So basically the question is, like, you know how it took, so here's the question. See, yeah, so see how, it, basically this is the question. See how it's always, if you notice, this is one, this is that, this is that, this is that, isn't it? So basically that's the question, how, how long would it take to reach basically 4,000? Okay, and you know how to do that using the same logarithmic strategy. Okay, so that's your question. So t is equal to log. Yeah, is that all right? And then you get the answer, which I didn't write. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's basically the first exercise. The second exercise is just basically plugging into the sum formula, which comes in two forms. This is when the ratio is bigger than one. So for example, three. But I also mentioned the ratio can be that's a number less than one, like a third, or a half. Yeah? So you use this formula if the ratio is, for example, like if it's going down by a half, like here. So um, take a photo of this so I can actually show you some examples. Yeah? Okay. So let's have a look at example 22, girls. So find the sum of the first eight terms given you've got 3, 6, 12. So obviously that's your A. Um, it's going up by 2. So just now, it's going up by two, so that means we want to plug in this formula because obviously this formula is when it's bigger than one. Okay, so let's plug it in. So what do we have? Um, find the first eight terms, so it's S8 is equal to three bracket R is two to the power of N, that's your eight, take away one over R take away one, which is two take away one, so that will give you 765. All right, pretty straightforward. Um, for the series, so next example now, example 23. So for the series 4 plus 2 plus 1, find it's the sum of 6 term and 10 terms. All right, well, I can see it's going down by, oh, you don't do right divide, right? Yeah, but um, don't use the number 2. You want to you always get times by a half. And that's obviously your A. Because when you plug it in here, you're not, you don't put two, you put half. Because if you put one minus two, you're gonna get a negative number for a sum of series. That doesn't make sense. Yep, so don't do that. All right, so for the first six terms, do I need to go through this? Is it there's nothing? What's hard about this? It's just the exact same thing as 20. Yeah, sorry guys, can I skip that? Okay. Yeah, sorry, this, I, I know why I wanted to go through that. <laughs> question five, let's have a look at question five. Da, da, da. five. Question five of the exercise. Uh, yeah, um, I just thought that was a tricky looking question, but it's really just treated the same way. Just a guide. So this is a 3 to the power of 1, by the way. So if they want you to find the sum of this, how would you find the ratio if you don't know what to multiply by? Always get the second divided by the first term. Okay, if you don't know what it's going up by, that's the, that was the point of this. So using um, index laws, 4 over 3 take away 1. So that's basically what it's going up by. 
um, which is, I think, a third. Am I wrong? Yeah, so that's your R. That's all I wanted to show. Okay? You will need that strategy for question um, 10, 8. Question 8. It looks tricky, but I just want you to play the same thing. So it's got log 10.3 plus log 10.6 plus log 10.12. So how would you figure out what it's going up by? Well, it's the same strategy. Second term divided by the first term. Figure out what you get. I don't want to spo spoil that for you. Try it on your own, but I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Try it out. Okay, that's all I wanted to show. Okay, that's it from me, girls. Thanks. Um, so for your exercise, um, 18.6 do odd questions, 18.5 do even questions. All right, thanks, girls. If you have any questions from previous exercise, just let me know. Can you hit, Yumi, can you hit?